So here are some of the paperwork and manuals and stuff like that that was inside the Yamato kit. First up, of course, I might as well get, go through this one. This is basically the, um, I guess the the return uh, postcard if you are missing a part. You know, clearly you check off what you miss and what you broke or anything like that. I, that's what I believe. I can't translate this, so but that's what my interpretation is. Next up here, of course, is uh, I guess some book publications, Kadokawa. Yeah, because here's some um, a comic. And of course, here's the all the ships from the fleet. You know, I have that. I have these three ships. I have these two ships, which I need to build, as well as this one. I've already built that. This one's coming out in about uh, I think this month. Core ship came out last month. And I don't know if that big ship is coming out. So that'll be interesting to see if Bandai is going to release it. Uh, here are some figures from Banapresto. Here is Yuki. Here is uh, Akira um, Yamamoto from uh, the pilot. And uh, there is uh, Ma Makoto Harada. Hopefully I pronounce that name. And then there's the other characters. It's... I'm glad that they focused on adding more female characters into the series because there was only there was only technically two female characters in the original Yamato uh, series, Yuki, of course, and Starsha. There was no other female characters. Well, there were some. I, thought, I guess that was a that Queen Bee uh, character it was considered a female. But other than that, that's what you had. So these other characters really, um, you know, kept the story going. So this is kind of, kind of like a poster. All right, but this is the meat and potatoes of this build, and that's basically the uh, parts and the assembly and the manual here of the 1500 scale. So we'll go first page here, which pretty much discuss the the parts that we need to make this kit. And mind you. There's not one part here that looks like it's going to be omitted. This is going to be uh, all for all for one build here. So this is something to, that you'll need for reference. Uh, clearly, you'll need some snippers and some uh, some pincers to um, hold parts here. Uh, but of course, you'll need some sandpaper and things like that. It's, you know, the normal the normal stuff. So the first part of the build, of course, is the assembly of the base. That's easy to make. And I see here the upper part of the front hull with these parts here, I guess, holding as a support. And here are the two clear parts that make up the um, the observation deck. Which, of course, brings me to the to the point where I'm thinking there's no light going through there, so it's going to be lightless. I don't see no assembly of uh, of an LED part. Hmm, that's something that I will have to look into. Then we'll continue on with the fuselage. We have the lower part of the ship. And then we get to here, which is the assembly of the uh, front part, especially the um, wave motion engine. And I see a part here, N9. You know what? Let me look, let me look for this N9 quickly. I don't want to waste time here. N9, N N N N N N N J L M N. Okay, that is one of the clear parts. So a clear part goes there, but I don't see no spacing full in it for an LED. Hmm. Like the observation deck, this is something I'm gonna have to look into. We'll discuss that later on. Upper part of the uh, hull here. Then I see the the assembly of the rear hull. Then uh, all this. And then here is the LED assembly for you to put on the back of the ship. So you have the, the, uh, the scene of the thrusters. And I'm assuming you can take this off and on easily. I don't see no assembly of lights for the uh, thrusters in the bottom. Okay. Then we have, a, then of course we, ha we join the two halves together. And then here again, another assembly of the LED lights for the uh, conning tower and bridge. That's considered a bridge, so you could say. 
and then uh, we have the assembly of the of the um, support bay where you can put the support fighters here that's the one cool thing about this is you can actually put those support fighters in there and simulate them you know docking or egressing from the from the ship then of course the uh, finishing up the assembly here then we begin the assembly of the uh, bridge and then here is the kit uh, fully built in detail something to look forward to and the very good. Um, here are the fighters and the support vehicles and certain scenes from the anime all the way here. A very good pamphlet. Continuing on with the assembly of the bridge. Now, there's a lot of clear parts here that goes in the middle because when you turn on the LED light, it'll go right up through the... Um, through the light, uh, some, uh, through the uh, clear parts, so it shows up. Kind of like the same thing that's on the head, uh, on the um, on certain Gundam kits, where there's a clear part going right up through the neck and lighting up the, the eyes. There's the uh, the smokestack, which is basically not a smokestack. It's the assembly of the missile launching system, and then the final assembly of the bridge. Then we have what I call the secondary bridge that goes under the ship. As well as some of the um, the uh, stabilizer wings, and then the main stabilization wings, uh, and then of course this section here um, talks about the assembly of the main cannons. You have the the three large cannons and the two smaller cannons, and then of course the various anti-aircraft guns that you have to put on on the ship, as well as the flight deck or the um, um, the catapult for the Cosmo Zero fighters. Uh, finishing up here. And then, of course, the assembly of the fighters. And technically, you'll be done by then. But here's the one thing that I wanted to point out. Here is that cavity section here that's empty. In the 1-1000 scale, there, is that, there was that carousel-like um, hangar bay where you had all the Cosmo fighters, uh, Cosmo Falconer uh, fighters there. And it's a cool thing that at least you have the, the support vehicles stored there and not on the base in case you don't want it to, to lose them. But I'm surprised that they omitted this. Maybe it was at, at the, you know, they couldn't make it in time or whatever. Or the possibility that maybe if you leave this open, this could open up the possibility of maybe a future carousel wheel. Maybe in a, like a, an issue of Dengeki Hobbies or Hobby Link Japan. Or maybe another um, um, Yamato kit sometime in the near future. Or, this is a, a guess. This is a great place to store like a battery pack and then funnel in some lights in certain parts of the ship. What did you think of that? And then of course on the last page is the is the pretty much the location of all the uh, decals that you want to place. And here is the color guide that I will need. It, basically it is a navy grayish blue type color. Uh, a reddish red color which I do have we'll, we'll discuss the paints later on there's a lighter tone of gray which I need to find out where that goes I have a distinct feeling it may be on the top but I could be wrong then a darker tone which happens to be the flight deck I mean not the uh, the main deck right here and here and then the the green which of course represents this and this This is going to be one cool build. Now, before we get started, I had to make sure that I have all the necessary tools and uh, materials I'll need for making this kit. I have my knife, I have my clippers, um, and of course I have my paints. But clearly the first thing I'll be doing is priming this, and I have this bottle of Mr. Primer Surfacer 1000, which I picked up at f and Hobbies. They have a, they got themselves a good set of, um, of um, Mr. Hobby paints and uh, primers. And I picked this up a while back. This bottle cracked. I don't know how. Must have dropped it. And I'm surprised it hasn't spilled all over it. But I wanted to try this on this kit so I can prime it. And then once priming, clearly, I'm going to paint. First up, of course, is the red. And I've been, I've been looking for a um, decent darker red color for this. And the only red color that I think would be appropriate for this would be this. Number 81, Mr. Color 
Russet, uh, Russet. I think it's Russet. It has a right now. It's a little white here, but it is a darker tone of red. As a matter of fact, if I pull out one of the trees here, as you see that we have the lighter tone, while this one is a darker tone. And with the panel lining or pre-shading that I will do, it'll make it a lot better. This. This is actually the type of color that I've been looking for when I was building the um, when I was building the two carriers, the, um, the Gamelis carriers that I made last month. Uh, last month. The next paint would be, of course, the upper part of the of the kit. The um, kind of like a bluish trim, a navy bluish grayish trim. Now. Going back to this, if you look at it, it has that, but clearly you want to make it more. Navy blue would not be an appropriate choice. It's too bluish, of course. And the one color that I had that would have been maybe possible would have been this, navy blue number 14. But this is basically used for U.S. Navy aircraft. So not a good idea to use this. I mean, if I had a Corsair or a um, Wildcat, yeah, I can understand that. But for this, no, it's too. This is a little too darker. What I came up or what I found would probably be, be a little bit better. This one is called Intermediate Blue. Again, U.S. Navy aircraft, but it seems appropriate for this. As you could see, let's um, open up the bottle, take a look at it. So, I'm just going to take a little bit of this. And as you could see, it has, a, it has that darker, lighter blue tone with a little bit of grayish here. So I think this would be an appropriate choice for this. Of course, there is something else that I, I probably will have to worry about. I mean, if this thing is a little too light, I wonder if I can do maybe an, a darker undertone, a darker base color, just so I can put this on. Not too sure yet. Clearly, um, when I do the pre-shading, I'm going to be using not black. That's a little too strong. I'm thinking of, uh, because somebody commented on my video before, that it's probably best to use a lighter gray of tone. Uh, or, excuse me, like a gray tone, semi-gray tone type thing. Uh, a good example right here is this one. This is Gunship Gray by Tamiya. It is a lacquer-based paint, so if I spray this on the top, it will probably be better, but I <clears throat> don't know if I have enough for this. It feels like I have enough. I may end up trying it. If not, I do have a light gray for this. And then I spray paint this over it. The flight, the um, the part up here that you see the deck would be appropriate for me to use the navy blue because it is a darker tone here. So the, this, the entire fuselage would be number 72. The top deck would be number 14. The bottom portion of the hull would be number 81. Pretty much simple. The last thing that needs to be painted would be the actual clear parts. As you can see, the clear parts are green. But in the package, in the uh, model kit itself, it's all clear. Uh, I had to get my hands on this because I thought I had clear green. I didn't. I had fluorescent green, which was already dried up. So I went to the hobby store and I picked up clear green by Tamiya X25. Let's give it a nice, nice pass over it, a light pass, and it'll look really cool. So here are my paints. Here's my primer. There's my kit. Let's shut up and start building Space Battleship Yamato. So the first thing to build, of course, is this, the base stand for you to hold up the 1500 scale Space Battleship Yamato. And like I mentioned before, this is the base stand that I actually have under my uh, Perfect Grade Strike Freedom, where you use it to support it. 
However, I guess they decided to use this because it's a it's a good base to hold up a very very large ship. But they had to do some modifications. Modifications as this. Uh, this part here that goes right on top of it, like so. And then the two support um, housings, or pegs, you could say. One goes here. And the other one goes here. Now, clearly, the, it's, it, it's not, uh, how can I say this? It's not universal, because... As you see here, this one is wider and this one is shorter. So clearly, the ship will be in this in this position like that. So you know what, how you know the kit will look like. Plus, you have this little space here, so you can put the uh, sticker or decal that comes with the kit. So that pretty much completes the assembly of the base stand, which we'll need to use to support the kit once we are finished putting it together. All right, let's now move on to the next part.